I want us to break a cycle of poverty, a cycle of struggle. Most of us, we have grown from a family, we struggle all the time. We struggle. Sometimes there's no rent, there's no food. But you see, as if God wants to deliver you from poverty, he will not pray for you. He will teach you the gospel. He will teach you what? Mm -hmm. Let me show you. You know, some of us, maybe I speak things. We are not blessed by accident. <laughs> we are blessed by principle. Oh, did you hear what I say? We are not blessed by what? By accident. Uh, <laughs> and I know making it is possible. Amen? Making it is what? Amen? Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Matthew 11, verse 5. Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Don't expect to be blessed by accident. There's no accident. You can't collide to prosperity. Amen? We are hoping to see a vibrant youth and things in the next three months. Hoping based on the plan we have, it will work well in Jesus' mighty name. And we just need radical leaders. That's all we need. You guys will finish school then. Then what? If you don't manage to go to campus, what will you be doing? What will you be doing? And if we start now, in the next two, three years, we'll be very far. Amen? The main thing is the keeping the heart beat running. Um, the men, we are doing our project. We are running. Even we are employing each other as men of the church. I checked across this week. There's no man who was idle. Everyone was at work. I was called. I said, sir, you are based on instruction. Every man is working. We have a job here. We have a job here. We started our own business as men, fathers. You know, it's running. We are making money every day because people sat down. I told them there is no prayer that will get you out of poverty. It's the gospel. Is the what? Gospel. The gospel. Matthew chapter eleven verse five. Matthew eleven verse five. He says what? The blind what? And the lame, the lepers are what? And the deaf what? The dead are what? And the poor what? The poor have the gospel preached to them. Not prayed for. I can't pray for your prosperity, my friend. You don't succeed by accident. It's my principle. The, the poor, Jesus is saying the poor. You don't pray for the poor. You teach them the gospel. Uh, the gospel is a principle. I when, I when I pray for the sick, I introduce to them the person of Christ, that Jesus can heal you. But when I meet the poor, I tell them the principle of Christ. I don't know how many of you are comfortable towards how you grew in life. And I don't know how many of you will want your children to grow the same way. I don't know. As others are saying, we do it Sometimes for the people who are coming after us. Who is coming after you? One day you'll be a father. What kind of father will you be? Will you want your children to struggle there you have struggled? Please, don't be casual with God. You want to break generational patterns. You must follow principle. You see, I grew up in parts of Islam. I am not, don't look like it. Sometimes... A grandpa doesn't even believe I grew in part of Islam. I say, I agree. I, she, she doesn't believe. I say, but you see, what changed me is principles of Christ. The gospel was preached to me. And I didn't take gospel based on whatever I hear. I took it seriously. So seriously. I'm blessed by the principle, not by accident. I'm just sharing a powerful testimony. Last week, part one, we gave our land. What I saw here, when I got to the office, someone gave it to me. Is it true? Last Sunday, I think I bought two pickups of sand for the church. This week, God cleared everything I was supposed to pay. I think a grandpa did know my testimony. Over a thousand dollars. Not you you're talking here praying. God gave it to me for free. Cleared all my bills. Ha! Huh? By sowing. It's principle, not by accident. Don't be jealous of Abraham. And don't say Abraham's blessings are mine. Also say Abraham's works are mine. Are we clear? As so as you do what he did, you will get the same results. The same results. 
We left here on Sunday. My wife went somewhere. We were blessed because I'm acres. We and that just God blessing us. I was sharing with the kids the photo of the kilometers walk around the perimeter. She was shocked. I think I shall rejoice also. God blessing us without any stress. Listen to me. It's principle. It's principle. And that's why I'm saying if you youth start now and things start now, taking these things we are saying serious. You will go far. Don't be an appearance member. Most of us will have to do technical appearance. You don't act, succeed by accident. You succeed by principle. By what? You don't study, you fail. You don't work, you sleep hungry. You don't sow, you don't reap. See, there's another way. It says seed time and harvest shall not cease. Is it true? Do your passion, but follow principle. Follow what? Follow principle. We are not here by accident. We are not here by what? Accident. So, unless maybe you got to where you are sitting by accident. Did someone throw you from the bed to here? You woke up. Is it true? You needed to dress. You needed to shower to get here. But most of us don't want the long way. We want the shortest way possible. So, why am I saying this? Join a family because that's why I'm coming. After we are done with this pilot program, I believe by the leadership that we are having from every family, I will come now down there. So if you are youth, you are not serious, I will not force anyone. I think the way people know me a little bit, if you don't want anything, I won't force you. But this is what I know. This ministry is different. And I've tried to tell everyone we are very different. I don't know I know where I used to go to worship before. But I believe by now you see here it is different. It's very different. We see things that different way. Because you see, there's no glamour in Christ if you're always sorrowful. People will question your Christ. And if you are not even interested, for the sake of your generation after you, for the sake, for the sake of that child will come after you, for the sake of your children, shape up. I hated poverty and I say my children will never go to even till now they cannot wear torn clothes. I cannot agree. I say they cannot. Sharing Henry, my, my daughter's school say, Are you paying university? I say I'm not paying university, I'm paying experience and exposure. Are we clear? But I told her I did not have that privilege. I remember going to school, there's no food. We sit the whole day, come back home, and the best thing you can get is strong tea and ugali. That was supper. There's no food. No food. Remember the landlord coming, locking the house. I said, I hate poverty with all my heart. And I said, if Christ will redeem me, let me follow him. Let me see his redemption package. And I think if I told you, I said, God, I give you one year. Let me see. I'll be serious with you in this one year. I will not joke. I will never miss service. I will serve whatever my man of God says do. I will do. Truly, to God be the glory after one year, things changed. It, I, I said, I don't need anyone to pay me for anything. I don't need anyone to encourage me. He said, calling me pastor, pastor. Yeah? I say it's okay. But my life is different. It's principle. It's what? This area is a mindset issue. And I'm telling you, I've interacted with people around there. People have a mentality that that's how life is. There's nothing like that's how life is. You make life. You what? Life. Now, you see, the Bible says time and chance or cast to them all. Oh, all of us have the time and we have the chance to succeed. All of us. If you sleep angry, it is your fault. It is not God's fault. It's not the government's fault. It's no one's fault. What you don't know, you can never have. And with the knowledge you need can never be found in all of them in books. It's found in men. All oh, these immature that send them some videos. I tell them, listen to these things. They say, hey, you're dickens of the answer. Let me daddy, thank you for that video. It was very powerful. And I tell them, do you know how many times I've listened to it? It's not by accident. It's not by accident. I want us to set our mind for a move. Amen? For what? For a move. For a move. For a move. You wait and see. The men have really decided. And they have put their mind. I said, now you see what you do? See what you do? They say, ah, thank you, sir. It's only two weeks and things are working. I said, they are working. But I told them it's a decision. This one has nothing to do with prayer. It has nothing to do with what? When the gospel is preached to you, poverty goes. And what 
this gospel is Christ defined. Christ defined in details. Where there's no way you can lack and want. But the Lord see you through in Jesus' mighty name. So I am encouraging you. I'm really encouraging you. Please, with all due respect, listen to every instruction that comes from here. Because after some time, we may not be the same level. We may not be at what? We may not be at the same level. And I don't want anyone to envy Alphonse because Alphonse is driving a Range Rover. We will ask you, why is he driving and you're not driving? You will say, I hate rich people. We will tell you that's up to you. He followed a principle to get where he got to. He followed a what? A principle. And when I was sharing with the leadership of that time in my office, I told them, the youth, I said, you guys, how I made money, this is how I made it. And I've never duped anyone, never exaggerated any figures to make it whatever I have. I follow protocols, the word of God. And blessings come. Blessings come. Amen. So, let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, then I go to the word of today. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I don't know how many of you hate poverty. How many of you hate poverty here? Are you sure you hate poverty? Or you love poverty? You enjoy sleeping on that speaking bed? Well, even when you lie on it, you lie with formula. In case maybe those with you down. <laughs> you know, there's a bed if you jump on it, it jumps on you. <laughs> you jump on it and it. <laughs> hey! I know, I got a agree, my friend. You all of you see me, like, if I gave you my background, I always tell them, don't envy men if you don't want to go through their story. If I, you want my life, let me give you my pain. Let me see if you can give it. Hallelujah. Are we there? Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Verse 11. I want us to read it together. If you're there, shout a louder. Amen. Amen. What does it say? One, two, three, go. I return and so on and The race is not to the Uh-huh. Not the battle for the Uh-huh. No bread to the wise. Uh-huh. No riches to men of understanding. Uh-huh. No favor to men of skin. Uh-huh. But time and chance happen to everyone. Did you hear that? So never say someone is richer than you. You don't know how to use your time and your chances. Now you have a chance to learn. Now you have a time. Take opportunities. Like now I was telling Joyce, now you relate with me. It reach a time you will not be getting me that you get me. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. The church is growing. It will not. And I told her, learn whatever you want to learn. I was talking to her and she was telling me, Daddy, I learn a lot when I'm talking to you. I say, now you see, learn whatever you can learn. Because as a time it will come, it's not me and you, it will be someone else. The time and the chance was there. Is it true? What instructions were you given? What instructions did you follow? You will finish school, sir. You will finish. Next two years, you will be a real citizen like me. Yeah. And if there is no something has changed inside you by the gospel, you may go the casual way your parents followed. I am telling the truth. You may suffer like them. What is your difference between you and them is what you are hearing today. Are we clear? Is what you are what? The difference between now and the next hour is the knowledge you are getting right now. If your minds are changing, you start seeing things differently. And that's why I pray, may the Lord give you understanding. Tell your neighbor, may the Lord give you understanding. So these families, I want you to be taken serious. Are we clear? And we will not announce outing for youth in the pulpit here. We will announce it to the families. Are we clear? All this weakness you are planning, it will be passed to the families. Are we clear? If you are not in any family, you will hear people went and people came back. There is not, there's nothing will happen. If an instruction comes not before, it little matter, sit down. One thing is needful. Sit down. Sit down, not your cooking. Sit down and hear the word. And the married came and told them, whatever it tells you to do, do it. He said, give me water, put it on the jar, and he turned to mine. Sit down, follow instructions. I'm telling you, it will change you. Like from tomorrow, I'm going to us time alone with God for some weeks. You just for what? There's another level that we need to get to. Are we clear? This is not everything. This is not everything. This is not everything. This is not everything. So, we don't succeed by what? Accident. We succeed by what? Principles. I hope you will follow our principles today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, having said so, I'm also believing that before next Sunday is our last 
So youth service before the family Sunday. Family Sunday will continue. When the day we have family Sunday, we shall not have youth service. I believe family Sunday happened the last Sunday of the month. This Sunday has five Sundays. So next Sunday, there will be from the leadership of the youth and the teens, we will have presentation here for the things you are learning, which I'll summarize on it today. Amen. And I hope also the youth and the teens can have a ministration for the family Sunday and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Now, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 4. If I have a serious youth team, serious teens, more teenagers will come to this church. More youths will come to the church. I have come to realize people are joking around this area. Christ is looked like a to church. May we be different in Jesus' mighty name. May we be what? Different. May we be different. Nothing works until you work it. May you work your life out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Kings 11 verse 1 to 4 says, but the king Solomon loved not. How many people love strange women like me? Thank you, Dickens. At least you're watching. At least you're encouraging me so much. Amen. These other people are behaving here like saints. The Lord is seeing you through. We know what you're watching even yesterday night. The Lord help you. Amen. Together with the daughter of what? Pharaoh. Women of... Hey! I know you don't lift up your hand. <laughs> yeah? I thought you said your relationship works out. Yeah? You, you give counseling. Eh? Hey, my friend. I'm surprised. Women of in them of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Many of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the Israel, the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall he come unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after the gods. And Solomon clave unto this in love. Ooh. Love is good, yeah. Mm. He, he, he said this woman will take away her heart uh, I come to say it's true when you love you don't think you are a fool how many of us have been foolish because of love even you wondered why did you go burn all your transport to go see someone who told you he's not there you took all your energy to go buy a gift to someone who says I don't love you how many of us have done, done stupid things because of love? <laughs> you want to tell your neighbor what stupid thing you did? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And he claimed unto this in love. Amen? Wow. When I loved mommy, I used to travel to Mombasa at night, spend the day with her, come back. Every man. She used to live in Mombasa. We go sit down on the ocean, eat some fish, come back again. What? Wow. 1500 was not a lot of money for marsh. 3000 I will raise it just to see her every month. Love. You know when you love, you don't feel even it's expensive to spend money. Yeah? How many of you have ever loved you? You guys have ever loved you? How many of us have ever loved for sure? You, until you, if you look back, the budget is spent on that woman. You wonder, who bewitched you? <laughs> Did the wizards of my village visit me and I didn't know? <laughs> wow. Love can make you do anything for someone. Love can make you fight a dog for a woman. Yet the dog has no problem with you. The dog was barking at your woman. You are the one who turned around and said, dog, don't bark at her, please. I warn you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love making you guys happy. Amen. Mm. And he had what? 700 what? Hey. How many of us have had 700 wives? Solomon is another level. But then if I meet Solomon in heaven, I'll ask him, how did he manage? I think I will tell God, can I go see Solomon's chambers? I say, Solo? Solo, how did you do it, Solo? 700 wives. Princess. And 300 what? This was a normal ritual. These were just concubines. They were concussions of love. Amen. They will sing to Solo. Solo Tarabu. Amen. Wow. And his wives turned away his heart. Did you hear that? 
Never love a woman more than yourself, my cousin. Oh, you didn't hear me? I don't love mommy more than me. I tell her all the time. I sat with me, then you. Are we clear? So you don't mislead me to stupidity. Are we clear? Yeah. That's why God, which is your salvation, which is you, and then her, then your children. Then never love your children more than your wife. Because the children can make problems between you and your wife for no reason. A child can scream for nothing. He's so a grasshopper. Ah! And then you come get angry with your wife for no reason. For grasshopper. So those of us who are falling in love, never love a woman more than yourself. There's no woman who can control me. It's not a matter of male thing. It's just a matter of principle. If you listen to a woman's tears, you can cry for no reason. And we will ask you, why are you crying, man? Because my wife is crying. <laughs> and yours will sound more badly. You know that? That's why God said you are the head. <laughs> they have works in families because men listen to women's emotions instead of listening to God's emotions concerning the marriage. That will not happen. I asked my wife one day, she will tell you. She said that man, man is hard. For me, when she, I know she prays before we talk about some matters. I listen to her, but I don't love her more than myself because I can't give her what I've never given myself. Are we, are we clear? Yeah. And you see, if it's honest. You say women submit, and then the husband love your wife. Is it true? How will you love if you've never known how to love yourself? If you can never buy yourself a shoe, you can never buy for a woman a shoe. Do you know that? So stop lying to us. You have bought a woman a shoe and we see your shoe. You have never changed it. We know you have lied to us. As a neighbor, when is the last time you changed your shoe? We know. We know you are a stingy man. See, there you are laughing, all of you. That's why I ask everyone. If you bring for me a man, the first thing I'll ask him, what's your shoe size? If he does not know his shoe size himself, I know he doesn't know your shoe size. <laughs> it's a principle. Ask the man next to you, what's your shoe size? You see I don't know. I, I think I wear eight or number forty-two. What are you saying? Are you wearing forty-two or number eight? That, that, listen to me. There are things which are very logical that can help you solve out a matter. Are we clear? Let me continue with the word of God. I know you're enjoying myself. Amen. So love God. Fact. You see, these women, Solomon loved them. They took away his heart. His heart. You can't take away my heart on a No matter who girl you are, no matter how fine you are. That girl told me, you don't love me. You don't take me to KFC. I will go. I say I buy KFC at this level of my poverty. That is cement I'm buying to you. I'm putting cement in your own mouth. Me, I cannot buy cement for you, my friend. She insisted. I told her, no. That time KFC came, it was very expensive. At my level, very expensive. How can I buy you cement? And I'm earning. I, I cannot buy you cement, my friend. You chew cement. I'm looking at you chewing cement like this. I say, madam, this one will not work. You are free to go. I say, I say, I tell the truth. And I will not cry. I will walk with my hands in the pocket and go. And I left. One day she texted me, say, hey, Abraham, nowadays you look good. Life is going well for you. I say, yes. I thank God it's doing very well for me. Because you lacked vision. You thought love is more important. I always say, people, love is not more important. Love can change anytime. Are we clear? Today, someone can love you. How I many have been left here? And you are told you will never be left. <laughs> you are told you are the apple of my eye. You are my sukaring guru. <laughs> you are my KDF. You are told without you, there's no element in me can work. Even my hair cannot grow. See how you have been lied to. Then you are left. You know, I always ask mommy, never love me. Love me for what I stand for. Simple. For what I what? I stand for. What where I stand is a proof of where my love is. Did you hear that? Where I stand is approved of where my love. Yes. I can I can joke with you, but my stand is the where my love is. There's nothing more. 
when i tell you no yeah you're passing that's where my heart is there's no more that you can tell me about that anyway for it came to pass when solomon was what all that his wife turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the lord is gone and was the heart david of his father so solomon loved this woman until she was he was old imagine so you can grow don't be those of us who just love to be loved and love to love don't focus on that focus on what you stand for what's your principles that's what we get you to heaven are we clear because faith is a principle again eh? by faith is a substance of things we hope for and evidence of things not seen so where i stand is my faith you say we stand even when we go through all the vast forms of temptation we stand love can change when there's a problem when there's a stand one will leave you people who betray you never loved you they just have another love are we clear no a person stand then you can know if you can work with them must try and test everyone around you i know they can stand i know i know this one this one can because you must test the individual first there are some people you gave them money you never saw them back again they change even their number hmm? you say why, why did you change your number i said i will not take the money i forgive you stay with the money it has not reduced me it has not made me poor it has just made you poor because money is accessed by access through people not through the bank are we clear you lose people you become poor do you know that the job you have right now is because someone introduced you to it huh how did you how did you know about the job yeah, don't lose people because you don't have stand be a man of your stand yet you are not being no yet you are be here that's why i rarely back up on my words if i tell you i'll do something i'll do something it takes prayer and i always tell them make sure i don't say it because if i say it you know it will happen i'm not going back so if you have anything to say say it now or hold your peace <laughs> if my stand is my love are we clear Mm, my stand is my love now solomon was tied into these things i don't know what you are tied to even me i'm tied to things and i need to deliver myself and you see salvation is a process most of us just want to get to god then we become the best we can know salvation is a what allow god to mend you and mold you the potter makes the pot by process is it true if but first of all take the clay and heat it and put that circling it okay then he will take his hand now try to cover it slowly and slow the process of being made is what would set you free from these things we are tied with but you see solomon loved so much that he could not be made some of us can't judge because you love the man of god so if the man of god dies what will happen to you you stop serving god you can't judge because but the deacon speaks loudly in Jesus' name. <laughs> you can't judge because Marianne sings like an angel. I know the way. Amen. Doesn't matter. So we came and asked ourselves, what is an erotic relationship? Erotic what? Now we, we remember the story. I believe in your document when you're going through it last week on your family's group. You saw the book of Second Samuel. It was Second Samuel, I believe. Yeah. Am I wrong? Or am I correct? Which is which? Amen? 13 something there. Amen? Am I correct? I need to check. Since I remember myself, yeah, I'm correct. Second Samuel chapter 13. I'm correct, Joyce. You don't want to tell me I'm correct. Amen? Second Samuel chapter 13. Now, let us read this story. Then we see if you are like this. Are we clear? And be honest with yourself. Amen? We start from verse 1. You read verse 1, I read verse 2. You read verse 3, I read verse 4. Okay? Are we ready? Are we in 2 Samuel chapter 13? Some of us are tied to these erotic relationships. And I will explain what is erotic. Amen? So verse 1, let us go. 1, 2, 3, go. Are we there? 1, 2, 3, go. Wow, lovely sister. How many of us have ever loved our cousin? Say, cousin, say, oh my dear, is this my cousin? This is not my cousin. Lord, there's an error in this relationship. This family has a problem. How can you make my cousin too handsome and too beautiful like this? Tell your neighbor, relax. Uh, number two, 
And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick. How many of us have ever fallen sick for someone? You could not even breathe and talk. Aja kongelesha siku moja uko na mood swings una fluctuate kama volcano. Sick for his sister Tama for she was a virgin. Hey, and Amnon thought it is hard for me for him to do anything for her. Hey. Some of us are sick with people in the media, superstars who we cannot access. Amen. Verse 3, what does it say? Are we there? One, two, three, go. Mm, some of us have crafty friends. Look at what he told you, verse 4. And he said unto him, Why art thou being a king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tama. My brother Absalom's what? Hey. Verse 5. Wow. And let us skip to verse 11. And the Bible says, And when she had brought them out to him to eat, he took hold of her and said of her, Come lie with me, my sister. Verse 12, what does it say? And she answered him, Mm-hmm. But she, he did it. I'm obsessed with something. What are you tied to? Is it kakinyoji? Porn? Sex? Gossip? Anger? Are you tied to your emotions? That you, everything you do is both emotions. Oh, my, the way I feel. I don't feel correct. I don't feel correct. That thing can lead you to problems. Now, let me focus on erotic relationship. Erotic relationship is when you can imagine someone and have a desire of someone you cannot get. That's why someone can take someone's magazine or picture and misbehave like a cow. Amen? And you wonder why you behave like this. A full adult like you. You know yourselves, eh? See, you'll be keeping quiet. How many of us have saved someone's body in the phone, someone's picture? Some ladies put muscles, men with muscles. <laughs> Say, man, that body, this is Jehovah's doing. It is not Jehovah's doing, it is your doing. <laughs> How many of us, when a girl passes, we cannot fail to turn around? We must appreciate the blessing. The Lord has led me also leader. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> How many of us appreciate the blessing when it passes? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. <laughs> no, there are some things which are blessed. Amen. When they pass, you know it is blessing. <laughs> you don't need to pray to be told a blessing is passing. Amen. Wow. Amen. That, that is it. It is in your mind. You imagine. It's something that can make you desire. Amen. Yeah, you have downloaded the Kardashians. Amen. You have downloaded some things in your phone. Ask your neighbor, what have you downloaded? You don't want to ask your neighbor. Oh, you are ashamed now. You are ashamed. See yourself. Ask your neighbor, can I see your photos? Just your photos, not I don't see your messages, just your photos. Some of us, if you see someone's photos, you will you will need another fresh baptism. You say, Lord, I want to receive you again. This one is too much for my eyes. Obsession is real and erotic is imaginary. You understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Someone texts me and say, Can you send me your photo, please? I say, Huh? Say I'm on social media. Why are you looking for my photo? I say, I need your photo. 
I said, call my wife. This is my number. <laughs> the number is 0726. <laughs> and then I later I said, did you call her? I said, I'm planning to call her. I said, you better call her. You better. By the time you finish calling her, you will understand better. <laughs> yeah, listen to me. It's serious. And this one can be something by default. You do not plan for it. Are we clear? You saw someone and you cannot control. How many of us have ever seen someone and you cannot control yourself? And you just want to know their name, their number, where they stay, just everything. You know everything. And you wonder why you want to know it. And it won't even help you. And about even they will not even talk to you. How many of us have had a crash? You have crashed on someone's mind. And you, when you see them talk, you think they are talking to you. The way you see movies, it's only you they are talking to. When they sing, you think they are singing for you. Only you. Only you. Oh, only. When they hug you, you think you are the best one. The person loves you. You are everything to them. Tell your neighbor you are nothing to anyone. Because love changes. I've told you love changes. I've told you love changes. I've seen people have betrayed me. You see me, huh? People who told me they love me with their whole hearts have betrayed me. I tell you, I have experience of what betrayal is. People who say, just they said they will never leave you. They love you. I, they leave you. I, that's why I say, I, let love be tested. Are we clear? Yeah, let love be tested. No matter I love you, let us first of all hold on. Let us hold on. Right? This one, the way you're going, you can be, you will, you will hurt me. So, that's the erotic relationship. You're imagining things. It's, and this one, let me tell you, it has nothing to do with only young men. It can happen to people who are married also. Are we clear? Yes. So, marriage is not a solution to pornography. Tell your neighbor, marriage is not a solution to pornography. Marriage is not a solution to masturbation. Tell your neighbor, why you look at you as if you are afraid? Are you a masturbator? That's why you are afraid? Tell your neighbor, marriage is not a solution to masturbation. Uh -huh. It's not. It can never. Are we clear? And most of us think that you say, when I get married, I'll start watching porn. First of all, your degree may increase. If you're doing two degrees, when you get married, you'll be doing 25 degrees. 40 degrees. Maybe people think you're in Kalahari dress at. You're burning there. Most of us run late to church because we're watching something funny in church at home. I'm talking because I know someone here. Uh, listen. These small things I'm talking about. Be careful. So have you ever been in one crash or desire? Yes, I have. I have one cousin of mine. I wondered, is she my cousin? I said, it is wrong. This is an error. Until I came and asked again. So I came to realize she came from a far, far relative. I said, thank God we have been introduced to each other. She, beautiful. And she's my friend now. Yes, you see someone, you're amazed. This one, God made it when he was fresh. This was the creation of Saturday early in the morning at midnight before we arrived at Doom. Amen. <laughs> Eloquence, intelligence. Oh my God. Clever girl. I love clever women. For me, clever women. I love women with good articulation. I'm just telling you the truth. If you're a clever girl, hey, it's something. I love intelligence. I think I'm drawn to intelligence. I'm never drawn to this beauty thing. This is, I say your face can be crushed by a, by a tractor here. What will I remain with? I want to remain with your head. <laughs> beauty face away like a flower. Are we clear? Or you think it's a joke? Beauty face away. Wait, I just a little chamoyo na majimoto. Udono mefuna kudundu kudundu zgumija. The only thing I can remain with is the intelligence of your head. Is it true? I always tell you, mommy, beauty changes. You marry a girl who doesn't look good, you can change her. Do you know that? Money can change any woman. You buy her clothes, you buy her makeup, she'll look fine. Is it true? But if her head is empty, I problem her. That's my own version. I don't know your own version. Maybe Dickens loves my dong, my dong. Amen. <laughs> Dickens loves heavyweight. I don't know about Dickens. <laughs> Maybe Henry loves petit, petit. Amen. Small, small, eh? Small girls. I don't know. Uh, maybe Anna loves what? <laughs> sugar cane woman. Eh? As well, she can chew sugar cane with her teeth. I know this one can open Fanta for me with her bottle. I don't need to buy open now. <laughs> anyway, it's enough of laughing. Uh, are you under, but are you understanding? What is your, what are you tied to? Which woman, which man has tied you? And I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful. 
But you see that I'm saying I'm very becoming busy and strong. So if you yeah, if you love me, I up, I'm becoming busy. One day you will not see me. What will you do? You will look for Henry. You look for Dickens. Mm -hmm. The only my stand is the main thing. Are we clear? My stand. So I have number three. Is there any emotional attachment in relationship? Yes. You can be attached with someone emotionally and they're not with you. You don't even live with them. Do you know that? That's why sometimes we dream people. How many of us have ever dreamed someone? Have dreamt your neighbor who you never talk to? Oh, see, there you pretend. Hey, Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in charge? <laughs> Anna, have you ever dreamt someone? Yes! She came in her bed and she was dancing to you. La, 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 la. Dropped her gown. Say, Anna said, Jesus, thank you for answering my testimony. In the middle of the night, thank you for showing up. <laughs> How many of us have ever had sex in their dreams? Thank you. Some of us are behaving like a sense. Your work is to look at others. You so you, we know you. <laughs> and you see, it's an emotional attack. You don't know. You, have, you, have, you love that person. You just admire that person. That person is everything to you. And also, you, the same sex can admire each other like that. The same sex. You find a boy dreaming Cristiano Ronaldo has bought for him a ball. And he wakes up in the morning and tells everyone, I met Cristiano where? In my dreams. Oh. It's emotional. So who are you attached to emotional? Especially that one. Can we be careful how we adore people? That's why God says, let us not have idol worship. You can adore someone at the expense of your emotions. You lose yourself for them. And that's why maybe as the church is going, you see I'm changing leadership. I want to make sure I detach myself from people. Not in a bad way. So that no one can reach a point that I become their go-to person. Are we clear? God becomes their go-to? Yeah, it's so dangerous because people can reach a point people worship you as a man of God. They think you are everything. They think you are the solution. Yet the solution comes from above. That's why I believe in the youth. Will, the leadership will take place very well, even with the family leaders the way we have done it, and we take over with the children, the women's church the men are taking over very well then it reach a point, even I don't need the secretary I just show up as much as I'm with Kirapa things are fine, amen things are fine that is all so that the decades does not worship you say, oh man of God lay hands on me, I say oh yeah my friend pray for yourself just say we need to go cook for me some chicken just to see me. Hey daddy, can we eat some chicken today? No, no. Be careful of this one. Emotional attachment in a relationship, it can be so serious. Until you dream someone. Those of us who watch porn, you know what you dream at night. Is it true? You wake up in the morning as a man, you have ejaculated. And you are sleeping. As a woman, you are wet, yet you are sleeping. Sorry, I'm saying it. You are youth or you are not. Why are you talking to look at me as if I'm talking Kunjara? <laughs> so I'm saying the truth. I want to help you. Are we clear? But there's a way out in Jesus' name. That's what happened to this man. He saw the sister come and you got sick. Sick. So that's what I say. Marriage is not a solution. Are we clear? Most of you think marriage, marriage is not. I'm talking uh, because I know what I'm saying. Marriage is not a solution. You deal with yourself, my friend. Deal with yourself. You. You yourself. It reach a point, no man will ever satisfy you. No woman will ever satisfy you. Hmm? Some of us have served with seven women. But they are still the same. And so you have the experience. You know what he talks about. There's nothing has changed. Yeah. Oh, check, I know you have experience. You know, you have, nothing has changed. I tell you, I know also you have experience. I know that has changed. Hey, Dickens, it's okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I love the way we, I, I want the word to enter you. That's why you mention it like that. Are we clear? So you know this thing, you deal with it. You deal what? There's no woman can satisfy you. Do you hear what I say? And there's no man who can what? That's why I say. First of all, to deal with these things, you must just choose that these things will not take control over you. Having a girlfriend is not a good thing. As a title, you think you have won. Having a boyfriend, it's not a, it's not a celebration. We are not the first one. Kwani, how did you come on earth? 
were people who had people before you came. But let it not become an obsession. Is this the only thing you think about day and night? But some of us are tied to these relationships. You don't talk to any guy, you don't talk to any woman, but the things you imagine, if you open your brain, even the devil will get one again. <laughs> Number four, as I conclude, <laughs> can you say that erotic kind of love can hinder someone's progress by hindering them from seeing what is wrong? Yes! You can love until you become stupid. Am I saying the truth? Mind the erotic relationships you're having. Stop imagining men. Stop imagining men and women. These people can finish you. It can stop you. You can love someone, you become stupid without you knowing. That's why I say, before I love you, I love myself. That's why, you see, I always say I can lose anyone. It's never a joke. If she has been with me. I think they've been with me, they know. No matter how tight I love you, the day I tell you, you won't see me. Even if you cry, you do whatever you want to do, you won't do it. Because there's no way it can become, a, it can make you stupid. Do you know life can make you mad? How many of us have walked because someone did not talk to you? And you don't know where you're walking to. You walk to say, where are you going? Here. Here where? There. There where? We don't know where. <laughs> Be careful. It can make you not see your progress. Are we clear? Most people got married, got married in Christ and they backslid because of love. They stopped serving God because of love. Never tie your life to me. All of you are never tie your life to me. Are we clear? Yeah, never. Because love can make you silly. The Bible says love is as strong as death. You become an empty container. You walk and you are not thinking. Ask a neighbor, have you been thinking of late? It can hinder your progress. A man, I have told many young girls, this relationship will kill you. They say, it cannot kill me. I know what I'm doing. Eh? You know what you're doing. I say, you're hurting. I say, I'm not hurting. God will change him. God will change him. You're being used like a toy. Come, sit down, laugh. <laughs> Keep quiet. Mm. Turn around. <laughs> Don't come and see me. Okay. Don't call me. I'm not calling. <laughs> hey. It's means your mind is not working. Is it true? Anyway, I know most of you are keeping quiet. You know yourselves. I know. Have you been made a cartoon by, that, by a girlfriend like that? Eh? She made you a cartoon. I'm so sorry, sir. The Lord has healed you in Jesus' name. You find a man who get his own salary, go give a woman. All salary! Give a woman who's not your wife. Then you come home with your children with only a piece of bread. As if they, you have been working for all month for a piece of bread. For 50 shillings or 70 shillings. Who bewitched you? That's why we have problems in marriages right now. Our fathers cannot stay with their mothers because this thing has hindered them. And their mother, our mothers are angry without understanding there's a spiritual backup behind this thing. There's a what? You call of you be serious to set yourself free. Have you been blessed today? I need to stop there. Amen. But if you are having any imagination of any girl or any woman, stop it. Those two people can they will kill you. True love does not make you weak. True love does not take away your senses. Are we clear? Mm. In every situation you are saying you're in love and you feel weak, that's not love, it's infatuation. Yes. Have you been blessed today? How many of us need help like me? Lord, deliver me from every tight relationships. You know you can date with someone and they're talking to someone else. Is it true? Is it true? How many of us have played three women at a go? Who have experience like me? Thank you, Anol. Thank you, Kelly. I think I I know this is title. You will buy your belt. Hallelujah. <laughs> we give you a trophy. How many ladies have played three men at a go and they're still with one? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Kirap and Justine. You're doing very well. I know you, first of all, these two, I know they're anointed. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. 